All right, so I got a call. I'm just going to record it as I go. I have no idea what I'm getting into. They say that the bottom of the case is cooling, but the top is not cooling. It's warm. Sounds like an airflow issue. So it's this one here, identified by the tag up here. And no airflow at the top. You know, these just these are all the same. It's just just simple calls, simple common sense kind of things. It can only be so many things that's going to cause the air to not go from here up the back wall and out the honeycomb. Here next to it, we don't have any problems except for the condensation, of course, and icing up over there. See? Well, obviously, this is just going to be contained to this section right here. This piece of glass is a four-foot section, as we all know. This is a 12-foot case. It's broken down into four sections with three evaporators. One, two, three. We have a problem with our left four-foot evaporator. Then we got our racks in here that we just pop out like that. And then they come out. And then we have our little covers underneath them. Then once we get them off, we can see our problem has revealed itself. This is a stupid problem to have. But, it is a problem. When you lose one fan, you get air loss. All the air pressure that would be going from that fan and up the top actually just escapes out the front here. And now I can feel the air. Our air curtain is going to be back where it needs to be. Stupid, stupid problems. Wouldn't hurt them to clean this thing, would it? Yeah, sure wouldn't. I don't really want to clean it. Looks like snot. You know, so I'm trying to figure out how to make this video a little more useful. You often run into this problem where you have these things here that are all floppy and they're falling apart. And you don't really have very much clearance from the top of your your blade right there to the bottom of it. So if these things are flimsy like that, they're gonna they're gonna collapse and you know if they do they make noise like that, you know. Example. So I wonder what could we do about that? Because see this one kind of has that problem here because it's all it's all bent like that so I put it in there like that then when they come in here when they're working on it when they're cleaning it taking these things out or whatever they're gonna fall in and that's probably what caused that to come unplugged because somebody probably had to be jacking around in here for that to come unplugged. There's not really too many things you can do about this uh, other than get new ones. So what if you can't get new ones right away? Let me see what I can figure out. I'm gonna get some black tie straps. So I can make a few little holes right here. I can go right there, across here, Right there, across to here, and same over here, right there, across to there, something like that, and run me a strap between each one. I think that would work. And then you just, you know, run your strap down, or actually, you want to run it from the bottom up. You run your strap up through the bottom hole over here, up around this one, and back down there. That way, you can put your thing not whatever it'll be on the bottom and you won't see it and you know you don't really want to tighten them up until la the last thing you do is tighten them up so you, you put them in you get them all like this situated you put it in there and then you tighten it up and you could either you know use a drill bit or you could do something just like this simple as a little slit will do the trick just fine 
but keep in mind this is just a this is just a temporary fix I'm gonna order them some new ones so that is my plan because I need new ones these ones are, are worn out Nothing fancy, right? But it'll let me get it done to where I can drive away from the job and hopefully keep the customer kind of happy. This is, by the way, the first time I've, I've ever done this, so I'm uh, learning and experimenting too. So I'm going to set it in place on top of uh, on the left side over here. We'll see that motor on the left. That's uh, that's a that's a ghetto motor. That's not the kind of motor that should be there. That's the kind of motor that should be there. There's a difference. Hey man. <laughs> it works. So I'm gonna stick me one in this one right here. Right there is where it's gonna be. See? Right there. Because it's all. Well no, not right there. Damn it, where did I put the damn holes at? Yeah, right there. Yeah, you can't see it. That's not a bad idea if I do say so myself. Now there's more. You know, there's more further down there. But I'm not going to really worry myself with those right now. Alright, this is the last one. Yeah, and by the way, if you never can find this model and serial number on these cases, every household case like this has a tag right on the inside of the bottom right there. So there it is. Now to find the part number so I can put it on the invoice, I'm going to go to Husband Parts, search for it by serial number right there. And it just happened to be the very top item. Bam, there it is. Easy enough, right? All right, well, that's gonna wrap it up for this one. I'll see you guys on the next one. Let me know what you think. If my ghetto my rig worked all right, I'll see you later.